Well, it's a pleasure to be here and among everybody else in this room. I have been practicing the law of attraction and being in the vortex since I was five years old, but not knowing what it's called. I have gotten my family through war and poverty and traveling through different continents and experiencing matters of life and death. And by just using the power of my mind and thoughts and where I envisioned us being and living. And um, so here we are in the beautiful La Jolla. My question really is, I mean, I come here with the intention of strengthening my practice of um, deliberate creation or co-creation. I'm a student of life, as I always have been and will be. And I also teach in a form of a coach to others. I tend to hear this from a lot of people saying that, well, this law of attraction is great, you know, being in the vortex, raising your vibrational frequency, this works, I get it, I see it. But I look around, and this is not my question, this is question collectively from what I've been receiving, that what about those that have no idea about the law of attraction, don't even think about how things work, but yet they get everything they want. They have the husband, the money, the this. You don't have to know what makes the lights come on as long as you can find the switch somewhere. <laughs> you don't have to know about electricity. You don't have to understand where it comes from. So those are people who have discovered early that they like to feel good, who gravitate toward the thoughts that do feel good. They've found that criticism feels awful, so they don't do it. And they found that compliments feel good, and so they do. They found that self-deprecation does not feel good, and so they don't do it. They found that being proud of themselves feels good, so they do it. In other words, you don't have to know about the laws of the universe. You were all born with this guidance system. It's such an interesting thing that when you're in sync with how source feels about whatever it is you're focused upon, it feels wonderful to you. And when you're focused in opposition to it, it feels awful to you. And isn't that just the most natural guidance in the world? Is it really necessary that we talk about all the laws? Is it really necessary that we put it into all of these steps? The reason that we're doing that is because we're trying to help you to forget all of the stuff you've picked up along your physical trail that isn't serving you. But the little ones are born knowing that they know that they're good until you try to teach them otherwise they know that they're appropriate until you try to make them naughty they know that life will be good for them until you begin warning them about everything they know that they are revered by all that is good until you try to convince them otherwise and so no one needs to hear this in the way that we are laying it out we're just talking to those of you who've talked yourself out of knowing it Right. So why did we do that? Where did it all begin? Why do we say, you know, hope for the best, expect the worst? Why do we say nothing is too good to, to be true? What now we collectively are we just want to point that. out that this is your question, not theirs. <laughs> well, the, the, <laughs> and that's a good thing. And the reason for that is because of your awareness of your surroundings, you've become too heavy on step one. In other words, you're sifting through contrast and contrast is giving birth to desires, but you are so aware of what is. It's your observational powers. It's your being infatuated with the see it, hear it, smell it, taste it, touch it reality that what is has a sort of hold on you. And so the contrast keeps being stronger in your experience than it needs to be. The contrast is serving you, but you're more of a vibrational match to what is rather than going with the flow of the new idea. And the reason for that, you see, sometimes people ask that question and what they really mean is, Abraham, if I'm pure positive energy, and when I reemerged into pure positive energy, I am pure positive energy, and I left behind all my doubts and fears, then why, when I return, why when I'm back into this physical realm again, why does contrast even have to exist? And we say, because the contrast is what helps you as individuals to personally carve out your desires 
and you are a creator who wanted a massive workshop from which to make your decisions about who you are and how you want to live all of you knew when you made the decision to come into these bodies that you could create it any way you wanted and all of you wanted variety surrounding you in order to help you to fashion the life that you want so it doesn't need to be hard it only is because you hold yourselves unnaturally and unknowingly away from what you want by focusing upon what is and here's the big answer because you're willing to put up with negative emotion because those around you have convinced you that it's natural and it isn't it isn't natural your parents say well life's hard just accept it your parents say to you the world is not supposed to revolve around you your inner being is saying yes it is <laughs> your parents are saying you don't get everything you want when you want it the universe is saying yes you do <laughs> and so it's a matter of you tuning more to the human voice rather than to the non-physical message and then you lose your way right and that is for a the while right you get tired of it until you live enough of it that a part of you says wait a minute I cannot believe that I am supposed to be deprived from all of the goodness that I know is around. Yeah. And that is the key. So you're surrounded collectively by a majority, by those who say life is not fun. Like that's not hard work. Just look at it this way. You are collectively surrounded by what is. That's why we say deal with it. You are collectively surrounded by what is. What is doesn't mean diddly squat. What is is only the platform from which you've launched more rockets. Don't let what is get your attention. What is is old news anyway. You're out here on the leading edge. Don't you know that you want to be where the new ideas are flowing? Think about it. What is isn't that compelling anymore? You've been there. You've done that. What is is just the basis of stability from which you launch and frost and come into alignment and dream and experience. The fun part of life is the rendezvous that are happening every day. It's the people coming to you. It's the ideas. It's the things you're hearing coming out of their mouths that you know the universe put there just for you to hear. In other words, it's the constant stream of unfolding. That's what life is. We are teasing with our friends who were on board the cruise ship, leaving from Seattle and going to Alaska and coming back. And as we were out floating in the beautiful waters of Alaska, we said, you got on this ship in Seattle and you're going to get off of this ship in Seattle. Wouldn't it have been interesting if once they let you get on, they said, don't unpack. This is your final destination. Might as well just get off now. It's logical, isn't it? Your journey has been completed. We don't want to waste the fuel or your time. So get off. And you would say, but wait, I didn't just get on to be on. I got on for the fun of what's coming next and next for the new that I will see, for the new inspiration, for the new feeling of exposure to life. And so this life isn't about just getting to where you think you want to be. It's the getting to where you think you want to be that life is. And you've said it in so many different ways. It is the journey. You've heard that so much that you want to gag at it. It's the journey. It's the journey. It's the journey. <laughs> well, it is. It's the journey. It is. It's the journey. It's the journey. Your goals are just your excuse to allow yourself to be pampered and spoiled by the universe who loves you. That's what it is all about, to put yourself in the vibrational, emotional mood to allow yourself to receive right now in this moment everything that is lined up for you. And if you could see what is lined up for you, the cleverness, the thoughts that you have the ability to receive and convey, the rendezvous that you have the ability to achieve, the financial well-being that is all lined up, ready to show itself to you in this way and in this way and in this way. The synchronization of the entire universe, the timing of when you look where and what you see when you look there, the glances that you discover and the sunsets that you see and the being in the place where the air hits your face in just that way. In other words, no detail is too small for the universe to orchestrate the perfection of what you want. And so 
when you understand, and you do, that feeling good is the key, and that you have the ability to feel good, you have the ability to control your emotions regardless of the what isness. But in order to control your emotions, you've got to care less about the what isness. You got to be a really good selective sifter and focus upon the best parts of what is while you allow yourself to dream. Katie knew it. She said to her lover, never mind what is, let's pretend. Let's say it the way we want it to be. Let's conjure the feeling. Let's separate ourselves from currently what is and let's conjure the feeling. Let's create the emotional environment. Let's put ourselves in the receptive mode. Let's get into the receptive mode so that we can hear what source is saying, so that we can feel the impulse to move, so that we can go with the flow of well-being that's been orchestrated just for us. Not one of you would have missed the contrast because the contrast is necessary to the creating of your vortex. Without the contrast that you think you don't want, your vortex would not be full of everything that you do want. You just got to get into that place where you don't see contrast as your enemy. Instead, you see it as your clarifier. You see it as your focuser. You see it as your helper helping you to decide. You see it as your benefactor. You see it as the friend that it is. And when you really get into step four and five, you will begin to realize that sometimes source is even whispering the question to which you will find later a more satisfying answer. Sometimes source is actually leading you into a situation that you might have formerly called a problem in order to bring clarification about who you are. Because you ask for all kinds of things. You see, words don't teach. It's only life experience that teaches. So when you say, I want to be sure-footed and strong, source says, then you need some experiences to show yourself that you are. When you say, I want to be funny, then source knows, then you need someone to hear how funny you are. And you need to sometimes not be so funny in order to even know what funny is. <laughs> Don't you? I completely get that. And it's an everyday daily practice to make sure that I am in that space. I don't personally watch the news. I do not listen to commercials and radio or none of that. But, you know, when I'm working with clients and people and they go off into the world of what is, they are bombarded by what they hear, whether it's through conversations, bystanders, you know, things, series of events that are happening around the world. Then they come back to me exhausted again and say, it feels like too much of a struggle from what we well, hear. Well, the first thing that we would say to them is, you're coming to me for replenishment because you are bleeding out your resources you're frittering them away by not keeping yourself tuned in. In other words, when you say to them, when you go places where your source doesn't go, there's a depletion that takes place within you. So that's why you sleep at night. There's a replenishment there, not because your body needs to rest, but because you want the distraction from the depletion. And so begin talking in terms of resourcing, resourcefulness, and just say to them, be aware of how you're feeling. You've got to be aware of how you feel in the early subtle stages. We are not encouraging turning off your televisions. We're not even encouraging not being aware of what's going on around the world. We just want you to keep it in a perspective. Peacefulness will come from an awareness that you don't want war. And you won't know that you don't want war unless you are aware to some degree of how war feels. In other words, we don't want you to eradicate from your life or from this planet the contrast. It serves you. Just keep it in balance. Just don't let yourself get so depleted that you feel discouraged and overwhelmed and like you can't cope. That's all. When someone coaches you, when you say something and when someone says, oh, you shouldn't say that, say to them, go away from me. <laughs> go away from me. Go boss yourself around. <laughs> you are the only one who can tend to your own emotions. So that's what you want to say to them is that you need to tend to your own emotions through the week. Don't let yourself get depleted. Don't let yourself get depleted because source is always there to replenish. But you've got to tune to the frequency of it in order to feel the replenishment.